Greetings and welcome my friends. You have come over to the undying side. This is Evil Dead, the Golgari deck featuring Insidious Roots, a powerful enchantment that builds a board of big tokens. In order to take advantage of the roots we need to be able to take men out of our grave and move them somewhere else. To that end we have men that can pop back out of the grave on their own. These men will not stay dead. We also have ways of getting them out of the grave and back on board. In fact, that's mostly what our deck does, it gets men from the grave and back into play. Let's get to the deck. First up is a full set of cult conscript. The conscript is a cheap early beater that can come back from the grave on his own. This ability is something we love to use to trigger insidious roots. Snarling Gorehound is another small man with a good ability. We can use him to help find a critical piece which is usually the roots. Do note that we have a decent set of cards that we can win games even without the roots. We have a full set of edicts to help out in the removal department. A full set of go for the throat would work here as well. The edict gives us the flexibility to take out an opposing planeswalker or thin out enemy men. Tenacious Underdog is another one of our men that can get himself out of the grave on his own. He's a solid 2 drop with 3 power so if there is opportunity we should get in for hits. This is also some of our card draw. When we blitz the underdog will draw a card and he throws himself back in the grave. The Dread Knight is another excellent card for our purposes. He doesn't get himself back into play but he does pull himself out of the grave which will trigger the roots. The Dread Knight is also effective at drawing us cards. Which helps with finding roots. We can't have a roots deck without the full set of insidious roots. It's a powerful and popular enchantment that makes a token every time we have a creature leave the grave. The tokens get bigger with every one made and we can even tap them for a mana. With Ren and Realm Breaker we try to get to her ultimate that way we can play permanent spells right out of our grave. That means all our men can go directly from the yard to the battlefield. And with cheap men we can play out multiple men in a single turn. And flood the board with tokens. Sheldred is removal as well as disruption with reanimation included. Sheldred can get back all our men at once. As well as men in the opponent's grave. Cease and desist is our answer to graveyard shenanigans. We can rip cards out of the grave to prevent the opponent from using them or we can rip men out of our grave to trigger our roots. Gaining 2 life and drawing a card in the process is an extra bonus. It's also a sweeper for enchantments and artifacts if we need it. The black virtue is a staple for black. It functions as removal early then works to get men out of any grave later. And when we get men out of our grave. What happens? That's right, it triggers our roots. For lands we have 1 underground mortuary. 3 restless cottage, the Golgari duel. These are the only lands that enter play tapped after turn 2. 4 death cap glade. The Golgari duel. 8 forest and 8 swamp rounds out our mana base. In the early turns, get in for hits when you can. Actively do what you can to look for a roots unless you have one in hand. With a roots in play try to trigger it as much as possible. With what we have in the deck, getting men out of the grave should be rather easy and we can flood the board with ever-growing tokens. That's the deck boys. Let's go play some games. Do you wanna play a game? This is Nick the Pony. No horsing around, Nick is a weird looking pony. We get a very solid 3 lander. We have a gore hound and a roots. The audience is a holdover from the earlier version of the deck. It was right after this game that it was taken out for underdogs. Keep. Nick says hello so we'll wave back. Turn 2 and we get a roots down. This is an excellent start. All we need to do is draw into more men. They get a greeter but that's a guy we can't let them have. We'll fire off our removal on our turn. Did they keep a 2 lander? And they tossed their 3rd land. They must really hate roots. Here's why I like the audience, it makes a token and replaces itself. 
The token may not do much on its own but it is an additional plant token. The same kind that our root spits out. We did cut it out of our list since we wanted to focus the deck on getting men out of the grave. Another greeter. It's a solid enabler card that we will have to get rid of. We'll use the Dread Knight for another draw. Don't be afraid to drop him early on to get in for hits. Here we need to find another Roots. They land a big dino. Big enemy men are a serious problem. We deal with them by using removal or outsize them. But right now we don't have any of those. Cancel that. We drew removal. And with any luck, Sheldred will help us reduce their life total at a faster rate. Put on those big boy pants, we got a job to do. They get another greeter and a little boy dino. What's interesting is they went with making a treasure and didn't use the gain life option. They might have bone head in hand. No matter what, they can only block one of our men. Send. This is a special delivery. To the face. We'll drop our Dread Knight. Hopefully they don't have Sunfall. That would ruin my victory dance. We got them boys. It's GG's. This is Ratchet Nick with his invisible box. Is it heavy bro? Do you require assistance? We've gotten a 2 lander. Luckily we can play all our cards minus one. As we like to say around here. Keep your pants on we'll lead with the swamp since we have two one mana men on our second turn we'll drop the mortuary and make use of its surveillability this might be one of those games we have to try to find lands nurse ratchet drops a shattered spire they are planning on making big men or they're going to try to take us to combo town i am not accepting any travel vouchers from here on out the surveil reveals a land on top yes we want that we need that A river herald means they have to have a combo in their deck, they just haven't drawn it. Or they're afraid we have removal if they play it. I feel we're going to struggle with getting lands. We'll use the knight to draw. Had we been getting lands it would have been better to get him on board first. Let's send in the gore hound. I'm starting to wonder if they even are combo. They fatten up their river herald and swing. As big as that thing is, we should block. This is a double two drop turn. Underdog and Dread Knight, get in there.
The good news is their guy does not have trample. Yet. Getting a surveil here and there does prove useful a lot of the times. And here we are able to find a land in a game we want to hit 5 mana. Well look at that. It's like Ren is the reason the matchmaker put us together. For some reason they don't send the land. They must not have enough for the required postage. Sheltered means they have a choice to make. Their big guy, I doubt it. Or their land. Possibly. Or Ren, I doubt it. Well bite me in the shark. They sack their Ren. That must be what they're using for removal. It's rather pricey at 5 mana but there is not much else they can do in Simic colors. And Sheltered is banished to the blind eternities. There will be no coming back. Good thing we have another 2 copies in the deck. We'll finally play out our Dread Knight. He's only been on the bench watching until now. He'll be able to block turn after turn until the end of time. I must bend Realmbreaker to my will. Allies everywhere. Stand with us. Infinite mana combo. Is that where this is headed? Combo town is on the horizon. I'll let you know when we hit the city limits. The Dread Knight volunteers to take all the hits from here until Kingdom comes. We could have used this edict several turns ago. Now it will only snipe their 1-1. One, one. But he's the one driving us to combo town so with it gone we can change course. Our forever blocker comes back ready to take another hit. Once we fire off Ren's ultimate we'll be able to swarm the board. The opponent's time is running out. I had a funny feeling here. Let's hold back the Gorehound this turn.
Another Ren shows up. Let me guess, animate a land and swing both at our Ren? Yes, no, maybe. If they both come in, the Gore Hound blocks the big guy and will trade with the land. Stand with us. Or they send the land at us and the big guy at Ren. Oopsie poopsie bro. We'll easily take the 3 damage hit. We'll get our forever blocker back and then send the gore hound at their ren. They will never get her up to her ultimate. It seems like they might be giving up on Ren. That's a minus two ability. Forget the mission. That's one to keep an eye on. Unless it grows out of range we can snipe her with our virtue. Well dang it. They're not even coming after our life total now. But it's too late. Ren is at 7 loyalty and we will fire off her ultimate on our turn. The ultimate makes all our men forever blockers. All we have to do is swarm and we should be able to close the game out. So many harness the connections between all things. That's a roots finally. We'll get it down on our next turn and start pumping out heaps of tokens. They do not have enough men to get through the great wall of forever blockers. Every one of our men that we play from the grave will make a token. And those tokens are going to get bigger and bigger. I have bigger problems.
I kept the underdog on top, but what I should have done is put him in the grave then play him from there. But it's okay, as we have plenty of men in our yard looking for milkshakes. We demonstrated the power of our roots and the opponent skips town. Smell you later bro. GG's. This is Zod, bro is just very bad at spelling. It's like he sneezed while typing. And nice, this 3 lander is very good. We have a roots and 3 men that, like Jesus, love to come back to party some more. The only thing missing is some removal. They are on Demir, but with their blue mana tapped we are free to drop our roots. If they have counters they'll have to use them on our men. The ones that come back from the grave. Invasion of Amonkhet is almost helping us out. Maybe they are on Demir Mill. This is one of those cases where we will want to try to maximize damage over drawing cards so we'll drop the Dread Knight and get in for hits next turn. You have to love seeing them use removals on our undying men. That is the primary reason to send in the Dread Knight before an underdog. He comes back from the grave a lot easier. They have a cave troll, no wait, it's the dark knight. That's fine too. We have removals that have been stuck in our hands this whole time. Ah. Did they miss the part where he comes out of the grave? It's like they are trying to help us. They're not an opponent, they're a helper net. They really spent a card to stop the triggered ability, lol. I hope they have like a hundred of those.
This turn will mix things up. Underdog coming in hot. Let's drop our forever blocker. Cycling him from the grave to exile to play over and over can easily end up winning the game for us. They send our Dread Knight to the bottom of our deck. But that was their last card. Alright, underdog, do your thing. We'll play out our new Dread Knight. At this point they're grasping at straws while we have loads of options. We will break them sooner rather than later. They really want to flip that invasion. Let's not give them another 4-4. We can wipe their team this turn. We'll start with Sheltered and whoever is left will eat the Edict. They know their goose is cooked. We're making turducken tonight. GG's.